Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody. Um, well, just putting a little bit of the finishing touches on this. Let's put that up there. Okay. Well, I thought I'd do some. I thought I, I thought I would do something I haven't done in a while. Um, doing a doing a commentary video on an article. Um, I found this one. Here, let me uh, let me scroll up real quick. I found this a few days ago. Um, this is from a. Uh, a girl named Jessica Wildfire. I've been uh, following her stuff for got to be about, I want to say about five years now. So for, for quite a while. And um, but I, I saw I saw a few paragraphs of this, and I'm like, hmm, this would be a pretty good this would be a pretty good article to do commentary on. So here I am. Um, and also what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, so if only to fill up the silent parts. Oh, I gotta look at something. Okay, good thing I saw that. Okay, but I had to, I had to make a sound tweak. Anyway, um, in the lower left corner, I'm gonna have some dark ambient music going in the background. That way, so, so this video isn't like totally completely dead silent or anything. So. And um. You won't be able to see it, but it's called Underwater Sleep Orchestra. I've never heard this before. So, it was just... The picture looked pretty cool at the time. So, I decided to just go ahead and go with it. Or, better yet, better yet. This is probably my favorite channel when it comes to dark ambient music. Um, Iron Cthulhu Apocalypse. I watched a little bit of this, like some some odd time ago it's called xenomorph rapture hmm that's two words i never thought i'd hear in the same sentence but but yeah like i said it's one of the reasons why i like this channel they got some pretty interesting names and some pretty interesting images here too so the um as far as the music itself it's just standard fair dark ambient music so let me go ahead and get that going and then also, throughout this video, I'm going to have a cat of V8 Energy, peach mango flavored. Just doing a sound check on it at the moment. Alright, I'll turn it down a little tiny bit. Close enough. Okay, but anyway, uh, Jessica Wildfire, we're screwed. And then I'm just going to do what I normally do, just go through and do some commentary on it. On the West Coast, had a shutdown. Oh, damn. Okay, yeah, I remember this. On the West Coast. Wonder if that's gonna happen this in the store I work at. I work the overnight shift at Walmart. Uh, primarily in the uh, frozen dairy department. So yeah, I like pulling meat and perishables off the shelves because refrigerators are malfunctioning under the extreme temperatures. And uh, we've been having that at my store too. In fact, it was, uh, I think it was probably about a week or two ago. Um, they had to pull a bunch of frozen food off the shelves because the uh, the freezers went down. So yeah, we've definitely been through that. No idea what a heat dome is. Split roads open? Oh damn. Yeah, this is like something you see in like a, a natural disaster movie or something. Massive pyro storms unleash hundreds and thousands of lightning strikes across Canada over a single night. Entire towns burned to the ground once again. Meteorologists told us they'd never seen anything like this. Yeah, except in movies. Or here. Yeah, except in movies. 
We learned that the climate devastation we predicted a hundred years, and this is um, this is something that um, this is something totally new to me too. I didn't think uh, climate change became an issue until like, like the forties or fifties or something. You know, I didn't know it was uh, I didn't know it was this far off, like a hundred years. So yeah, we had all this time to do something about it, but we didn't. Just we're only human. As as wrong as that might sound. Like food literally melting in grocery stores. And now that I think about it, I wonder if this is why my refrigerator is on the or, I wonder if this is why my refrigerator went kaput again for the third time. Maybe it's got, maybe the weather has something to do with it. Yeah, because how little our leaders are willing to sacrifice or change. Well, yeah, because, I mean, our roots are too strong and deep. It's what we've been doing for many, many, many years. And then all of a sudden, you know, climate change is staring at us in the face, and and I think um, for a lot of the climate change deniers, deep down in the back of their minds, they know we're right. But uh, again, they've been uh, you know, we're creatures of ha well, we're creatures of ha we're creatures of habit. You know, we've been doing the same thing for many, many, many years, and now we got people telling us, hey, we need to drop, you know, drop everything we do, you know, drop everything you're doing and work on my problem. That's um. That's how we're translating that. Like all of a sudden, we have to give up our lifestyles and, you know, go green. Like, like, and drop a hat just like that, you know. So, okay, I'll turn it down a little tiny. No, you're not. No, you're not. Nope. 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 Rush start. And again. be able to do it here but let me let me go um yeah I won't be able to do it I'd have to do I'd have to do many I'd have to open up like too many tabs and windows and whatnot just to find out what a heat dome is no. catastrophize we do however realize that we've got to get our ship together climate destruction hmm so now, it seems we've reached a point where, once upon a time, it used to be called global warming, and then it, it was called climate change, and now, apparently it's being called climate destruction. So, yeah, things must be, things must be getting pretty bad. Classic consumerism. Um, George, I mean, what of um, I wish I knew the name of this, I wish I knew the name of the bit that he did, George Carlin. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he did a stand up bit about consumerism. I wish I knew the title of it.
But yeah, he he freaking nailed it a long time ago. You know, it's something like Americans are the only people in this entire world get that could turn this planet into something from from a beautiful from a beautiful green ball into something worse, a shopping mall. Mile after mile after mall after mall. Big malls, short malls, mini malls, something, something like that. But he goes on and on like that. Yeah, it's no longer an option. Or not, not that it was before, but you get the idea. Acknowledgement. We need major changes, not... Okay, um... Yeah, I'm, um... Unrelated yet, unrelated note. Um... A few years ago, uh, when I weighed about 210, um, the short, the TLDR to that, was I, I was just tired of being fat, so I went on a weight loss campaign. Eventually, I got myself down to 140, but... Um, right around that, right around that weight range, I ended up cracking, and I went on, I went on a week-long junk food binge. So, being pretty devastated by that, I went back to my old ways, and now I can't get up the courage to weigh myself now. But if I weigh two ten, you know, if I just went back to square one, I wouldn't be surprised. So, kind of the same thing here. Yes, we need to, we need to address this issue. And we needed to get it resolved. But it needs to be a permanent change. Like I said, it's like I said, um I think the way um I I mean again we need to do something, but it needs to be a it needs to be a gradual it needs to be a gradual steady change. It's not I don't it'd be, it'd be kind of a bad going based on what I've gone through, you can't just you can't just tell humanity we got to get this problem resolved, and everyone just drop what they're doing and boom, get it corrected. Because uh, cause what will end up happening is once we've gone green and everything's back to back to normal, you know, we might just end up, you know, going crazy and reverting back to our old ways. So, again, it needs to be a steady, a steady, gradual change. You know, it's basically down to lifestyle and environment, not willpower and discipline. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So... surge in a pandemic. Yep. I heard about this. Um, I believe in the West Coast, they got a new Delta coronavirus or something like that. Um, if you're vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, it helps. But even the, the vaccines that we all got won't, uh, won't completely protect you against this new virus. Oh, damn, this is interesting. It's 118 degrees in the Arctic Circle. Oh, wow. Your boss is telling you it's time to get back to the office. Yup. 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 Watering his lawn and grilling cow flesh that consumes roughly 2,000 gallons. Yep. And to be fair, I used to be like this. I was the kind of person that would eat at McDonald's every day. Um, I ate a lot more junk food than I do now. So, junk food was basically part of my diet. Recyclable cups, it's always next year. Yep. But again, but again, based on my own experience, Based on my own experience with this, with this, if we we have to make a change, but I think it has to be gradual. Just a little here, a little improvement there, a little fix here. You know, no, no sudden <laughs> put, bringing everything to a screeching halt and then having to, you know, suddenly change the lifestyle. That's not going to work. Um, we're fatally complacent in this day and age. Yes. 
I mean, but, uh, I mean, our forefathers had it a lot worse than we do. So, it's probably going to take me a while to explain. I don't quite have the words, but... I mean, we worked hard to get to where we are. But now, all of a sudden, you know, so, you know, we're... We might be resting on our laurels, but I mean, it's... Oh, like, like I said, I'm trying to... I'm trying to find the words up here. I mean, I mean, we worked hard to get to where we are, but now, now to be told that all of a sudden we have to change our way, you know, all of a sudden we have to change our ways now, yeah, I can understand why people would be so pissed about it. You know, maybe, maybe a hundred years ago, if there was some way that we could show them that, hey, if you don't, if you don't change your course now, this is what, you know, Here's a little portal about, here's a por little portal you can look into about what's going to happen 100 years from now if you don't do anything about it. You know, this, or this is what happens in 100 years if we don't do something now. You know, they might look at that, whoa, shit, oh, wow, oh, uh, yeah, let's get going on this now. But, you know, there's no, there's no way of, uh, you know, there's no way, real way of uh, convincing anybody of this 100 years ago. You know, when somebody says, yeah, it goes up, otherwise the planet's temperature is going to go up one degree every year. Or, you know, or something like that. I mean, when it's that, when it's that small. You know, and most, eh, whatever. until one day it gets so hot outside their air conditioner craps out. I practically have to have mine on for at least six, 16 hours a day. I mean, as of recently, the weather's been up. Uh, the weather's been anywhere between 90 to 100, so... God help me if mine crapped out. I mean, my refrigerator's already screwing up. It's like, it's the third time it's gone on the fritz, so... Um, in this, not, not saying I'm above it all. I'm not saying I'm a snowflake, but I'm not the one they're looking for. Like I said, I'm a, I mean, yes, I'm a junk food junkie now. I've got a junk food addiction, but, uh, this, what I have to have, what I have to have now is nothing compared to what I, compared to, uh, how I used to be years ago. Like, like I said, junk food back then was pretty much part of my diet or was at least half of my diet right there. You know, McDonald's every day, uh, donuts, cookies, and whatnot every day. That kind of thing. Now, if I'm, if it's an off night, usually it's like, like a couple donuts and a candy, a couple donuts and a couple candy bars, and that's it. Everything else I eat is nutritious. So, but, but yeah, I've seen um. In fact, I did commentary. One of my view, one of my viewers, um. Hey, the channel is named Angry Grandpa, and um, there was a uh, there was one, one of his videos was called "Eats a tr or Eats a Triple Cheese or Eats a Eats like a Five Cheese Burger at McDonald's or a Five Cheese Whopper at Burger King." I'm sitting there watching this guy just scarf it down like, my God, you know, it just, I mean, I I end up feeling pretty bad for him. You know, but yeah, I and knock it off. A lot of them are in denial too. Yeah, they're, they're gonna point their fingers at windmills and liberal snowflakes. They're gonna with the salt. Yeah, they're gonna blame. They'll blame anybody but themselves. You know, they think um, they think addiction, they think addiction only applies to those to those that are doing cocaine and shooting heroin, et cetera, et cetera. But not the fact that, you know, they're you know they're eating at Burger King every day or they're chowing down at McDonald's every day. You know, 
No, they're not addicted. An article about climate change and somehow I managed to change the subject and talk about addiction. Perhaps because the two kind of go hand in hand. You know? You know, rich people are probably about as addicted to wealth as I am to junk food. Or I should say as we are to junk food. Optimism is selfish as hell. Um, I noticed she's got optimism in quotes. I think, um, I think, uh, which, I think her, her definition of optimism is, uh, don't worry, things will get better. Don't look at the problem. Don't look at the problem. Maybe it'll go away. That kind of thing. Climate change denial. I don't read newspapers, but uh, yeah, I will. I mean, as far as like mainstream newspapers, USA Today and whatnot, I just don't get into them. I do, however, read stuff like this. So, again, I'm not the guy you're looking for. Okay, um, what? Some of these people get busted because nobody wants to read yet another. Listicles? Oh, art, um. List articles, okay. Ten traits of emotionally healthy people are the five have to have. I'm sorry nobody wants to hear your opinion about the five little things that make someone... Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm... It's kind of a, a related yet unrelated note. Most top ten lists that I look at are freaking boring. I mean... There's a lot of time... A lot of those top ten lists, they just follow pop culture. Or they follow whatever's most popular or whatever made the most amount of money, etc. So, boring. Yeah, it sounds like she's going to get a little snooty, but considering who she's talking to, can't blame her. We're trying to get other people to give a damn so we can survive a little longer. Yep. You know, I should all, I should all, I should almost have streamed this. Do you mind if we stop gushing over Steve Jobs? Yeah, I heard this guy is a total, complete asshole, too. I think one of my co-workers hates this guy with a passion. Gushing over Steve Jobs for a minute to address the very real food insecurity, poverty, homelessness that some of us deal with on a daily basis. Um... Never had to deal with it myself, but I totally get what she means, though. It's not theoretical. Nope. Okay. I think, um, last I read this, this is as far as I got. Um, read actual news analysis. Um, what I'm reading right now is what I would consider actual news analysis. Like I said, I don't read, I don't read, um, I really don't, I don't watch the news. Or I should say, I don't watch mainstream news. I don't read mainstream newspapers as far as like political stuff. Um, I'll watch Bill Maher from time to time, but mainly just his new rules and that's it. Um, uh, I'll, uh, and I'll read articles like this. Stuff that you don't see every day. Uh, 
Ah, uh, call and or email. Yeah, this is probably a weak point of mine right here. But, um, I think this is also a situation where I would, I would, I would kind of rather just, I would rather just meet the congressman, like, like, run right into him at a gas station or something. You know, and not just sit here and, you know, actually send him, you know, actually send him an email. Plus, uh, at least in my mind, lots of other people have probably already sent him the same issue that I have. I mean, all it would be is just basically an echo chamber, or I'd just be echoing what everybody else would say. That's one of the reasons why I would rather, uh, I would rather talk to a, talk to somebody like that, like, in a laundromat or something, or, you know, just, you know, or accidentally rear random in traffic, or, you know, something like that, you know. Um, vote Democrat. You could probably, um, you could probably vote independent, too depending on what their uh, beliefs are. But usually independents almost never make it. Um, I think ever since Jesse Ventura was elected governor of Minnesota, it's independents pretty much have uh, no chance now. If you have the money, yes. But again, don't, don't break your bank doing it. I mean, I work part-time, so I don't really have the money to do something like this. Um, help register people to vote. You can do it online. That's what I did. I mean, that's about as, that's about as far as I'd go for helping, you know, people register. Just, you can do it online. Here's the address. Um, help them get to the polls. I wish you could vote online. You can register to vote, but you can't actually vote online. No, you have to actually go to the uh, polling place to do it. Um, as far as actual experiences go, I probably defer to other people. From what they say, you're you're gonna have to wait for you have to wait an extremely long time to get in there. I believe that system is by design. By uh, I guess by Republicans. By Republicans to keep Democrats from voting. Um, basically, don't live beyond your, don't live beyond your means. You know, um, I would never, I would never ask somebody to just suddenly, you know, suddenly change or completely change their lifestyle or anything like that, but, you know, cut down on the junk food. I mean, I get, you're, I mean, I'm a junk food junkie, but. I don't eat, I don't eat as much as some other people, you know, I mean, again, some, you know, I used to have the lifestyle that some of these other obese people have, where at least half, again, sorry to sound like a broken record, but at least half of my diet was junk food, at least, you know, so I would probably ask, you know, can you, you know, cut down a bit, you know, I wouldn't ask somebody to stop eating the junk food completely, never again, I've been down that road, I've been down that road, and it, it often, you know, it often leads to a bridge out. Sorry if that didn't make any sense. But, um, so, you know, you know, I mean, eat more bananas. Bananas are cheap. You know, eat more, you know, eat more grapes. I mean, I, I, now that I think about it, this book I read many years ago named Eat, Drink, and Be Merry by a guy named Dean Adele, he, he basically freaking nailed it. It's less, it's not, not so much what you should be taking out of your diet it's about what you should be adding to it you know try to think of it like that rather than just cutting out stuff you know eating you know eating more you know it's not eating less junk food it's eating more nutritious food you know and again um i think even bill Maher said the same thing too the kind of i mean the way you know the food situation in this country it's expensive as hell to eat healthy and i and even i would say that too because I mean, if, you know, if I, if I was married, you know, if I was married and or had kids, I probably wouldn't be able to have the lifestyle I have either because at least half of my diet is nutritious food. But again, if, if I was married with kids, I'd be as much, you know, I'd be eating as much junk food as everybody else would because it's cheaper. It's cheaper and it's easier to get. 
So, but again, I would, you know, but as far as sustainable living would go, I would, um, that's what I would say too, you know. I wouldn't ask somebody to cut off the junk food. I'd ask them to, you know, eat more bananas. Banana, again, bananas are really cheap. Um, grapes, depending on where you get them, can also be pretty cheap as well. Um, eat more tuna. Uh, tuna, I, I think I just did a once-over on an article, but tuna's pretty damn good for you. And it's actually pretty cheap, too. So, again, you know, these are things you can do without having to actually cut out the junk food. You know, throw some, you know, throw some tuna in there. Um, personally, I like salmon, but, but, uh, you know, I love salmon, but salmon's also expensive as hell, too. So I would never, I'd never ask somebody to, to, to go that route. I mean, they probably couldn't afford it. Whereas, I'm a single bachelor, so I can. I mean, not easily, but I can afford it. And, yeah, but let me, let me move along here. I'm, I could probably talk all day on this. Net zero societies, I have no idea what that is. That's a new term to me. Um, consume fewer single-use plastics. Yes. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if styrofoam would be better than plastic. But, um. But yeah, that I hear that a lot. Single-use plastics are freaking evil. They're really terrible. Uh, so I'm kind of wondering if styrofoam would be a better option then. And um, but uh, I've been using me. I use um, I use plastic cups. They're not single-use plastics. I use the same the same glass over and over. Um, I don't use disposable bowls. I use the same one over and over. So. I mean, I, I, I do, uh, I drink, uh, once in a while, I'll drink bottled water at work, once in a while, but usually, if I do drink water at work, it's just grab a styrofoam cup, fill it with water, go, and that's it. I can't afford to, I can't afford to be drinking a lot of water at work since my department is over here, and the bathroom is way the hell over here. And, uh, and I got a, I got a manager who, who's lazy, to the point where he does not want to do any more work than absolutely necessary. So, if you um, if you walk all the way over to the bathroom to go pee, and then you walk all the way back, he'll, he'll kind of make a mention of you need it, you need it, you can only use the bathroom on your breaks and lunches because he does, you know, he doesn't want to spend any more time work, you know, any more time working than necessary. So. And you know, and you know us. We have to go to the bathroom. We're all lazy slackers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because, you know, again, he, he's, 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 he's lazy to that point where he wants to make sure everything we do is accounted for. You know. You know, we spend a few extra minutes going to the bathroom means he has to spend a few more extra minutes working. So he's that kind of person. So, but anyway, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digressing. Uh, stop buying stuff from Amazon? Yes. Unless... Okay, but, uh, I have a girl... I mean, worst comes to worst, my job, Walmart, is a quarter mile away from where I live. If I need something, or, I mean, if I don't have an absolutely critical need for something, I could just go over here and... I, in worst case scenario, I could just walk there and get it. So, I do... But I do believe in, um, buying stuff from Amazon... Whatever, whatever I can't get around here, I'll buy from Amazon. So, I would probably say, instead of saying stop buying stuff from Amazon, don't go crazy buying stuff from Amazon. Like, don't, you know, don't do your grocery shopping from Amazon, I guess. Unless, unless you live way out in the country or something, and you, know, you gotta drive 50 miles to grocery stores, you know, something like that, but I mean, I guess uh, what I'm also trying to say is, don't don't use Amazon as a crutch. Again, I would just, um, I would only buy the, I would only buy from Amazon stuff that I couldn't get from around here. 
Um, I don't, I've never heard of this, a buy nothing group. But um, I would probably, I would probably say, keep the uh, keep your overhead to a minimum. Try to avoid making, uh, try to avoid making frivolous pur purchases. Um, whereas uh, again, I I now work part time, so I'm already I'm already I've already nudged myself closer and closer to the buy nothing group because again, I work part time now. And um. Uh, Provided I don't do any stupid spending, um, I am uh, I am just a hair above um. Uh, how does that go? I'm just barely out of the red. I'm. Oh God, what? There's there's a term for it. I wish I knew what it was. I'm just a hair above breaking even. I mean, again, provided I don't do any stupid spending, um, I'm still making a little bit of money every month. Yes. Yes. This... It boggles my mind. Um, back when I was living with my... Back when I was living with uh, my relatives throughout the years, I don't understand why you have to buy new clothes for back to school. I mean, unless your children are outgrowing, like they're... They're all growing the clothes they're wearing. They're, it's too small for them. Then yeah, I can understand that. But I mean, if your kids can still wear the same clothes from last year, why don't you just have them wear? But I mean, you know, my both of my sisters and brother-in-laws are constantly complaining about having to buy new clothes. They can't afford to buy the new clothes for, you know, for the new school year. Then don't buy it. I mean, again, unless your children are outgrowing the clothes, then don't buy any more. Just have them wear the same things. I mean, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. You know, I figured it'd be like Economics 101 or Budgeting 101 or something. But no, it just, they feel the need that they have to do this. But yeah, I totally agree with this too. Eat less meat and dairy. If you, again, this kind of goes back to what I said. Um, I wouldn't ask somebody to just suddenly stop what they're doing and stop eating meat and dairy at all. Again. Maybe, um, I, um, I kind of forgot to mention this a while back, but the reason, um, the reason why me and Dean Adele are suggesting, you know, suggesting, you know, it's not cutting out stuff in your diet, it's what you're putting into your diet. <sighs> no, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Hang on. Damn it! But ba basically, you don't have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask you to just suddenly, completely stop eating it. You know, maybe. And I. Al I would also want to say, eat less red meat, or basically eat less beef. You know. You know. Eat less hamburgers. Eat less steak. Um. But. Even for somebody like myself, I there's there's time. I mean, there'd be times once in a great while, but I only do this like in a family setting, or you know, if I'm with my relatives. If we're at a restaurant and if a burger sounds really good at the time, then yes, I'm gonna have a burger. So, but I would say stay away from the red meat. You know, basically stay away from beef. And again, like I said earlier, go with tuna. I mean. Tuna is actually really good for you, and it's also cheap. So, you it, it can base the short answer on that. It can be done. So, um, same with dairy. You know, stay you know stay away from regular milk. I would. I want to say unless it's skim milk, you're kind of skirting the line. But again, um, almond milk is probably best. But again, almond milk is expensive as hell, and it, so even. If you're on a budget, if you're, I mean, if you're pretty poor, you kind of don't have any options. You're, if you're going to get, if you have to get milk because it's cheap, I would probably say at least get the skim milk. You know, the fat-free stuff. But again, almond milk, I could probably buy a gallon of regular, I mean, the for the, for the cost of a gallon of milk, 
is I could probably, I could, for the cost of a gallon of milk, uh, I have to, is, okay, you kind of get what I mean, I'm having trouble, I'm having trouble saying it, but basically, you're paying twice as much for a half a gallon of almond milk as you are for a, a gallon of regular cow's milk. So, again, if somebody didn't want to go the almond milk route, I totally understand. Because, yeah, that shit is expensive. Um, same thing here. Eat more beans and vegetables. My ultimate alternative on this is, uh, they're starting to come out with it at Walmart. Um, around here, another, another smaller grocery store chain called Colborn's and Cub Foods. This is what I get. Uh, it's rice, broccoli, and cauliflower. Those of you that have watched my streams know that I eat it almost every day. But, but again, just like almond milk, that shit is expensive. I mean, you're paying almost, um, you're paying at least twice as much for a bag of rice, broccoli, and cauliflower as you would for, say, a can of mixed vegetables. Um, beans. I used to eat kidney beans and lima beans a lot till I ended up phasing them out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If you can handle it, if you can handle it, um, well, if you can handle green beans, I, I'm not into green beans at all. They're too bland. I've tried putting various spices and sauces on them, and it still, it still tastes like green, it basically tastes like green beans with lemon pepper seasoning on it. I just, it, it doesn't, green beans don't work for me, but if you can make it work for you, go for it. But yeah, it, but, but like, I, like I was saying, lima beans and kidney beans, I used to eat those a lot, but eventually I ended up phasing them out. I just didn't care for them. And I also remember reading them, reading somewhere that those kind of beans aren't that great for you. It, they kind of fall under the category of uh, grains, like oatmeal and whole wheat bread. They're not, they're not bad for you, but they're not ideal either. So, but I think, I guess, uh, legumes, I guess they fall under that category as well. Drive less, if possible, yes. But um, a web or a YouTube channel that I go on called um, Not Just Bikes. The guy on there was actually ranting about the, the streets, you know, about the streets and suburbs here in America. They're car dependent. So even, you know, even despite the fact that uh, that theoretically I could probably walk to a grocery store, I still don't because it's act, you know, it's actually quicker and it's actually safer. To just simply drive that quarter mile that it is to walk. I mean, because I ain't—I mean, especially during peak hours or something—I ain't taking that chance. Maybe, maybe if if we, if we started having grocery stores that were open 24 hours a day, we're, you know, excuse me, but well, we we haven't had that pretty much ever since the the C virus pandemic. Nothing around. Only convenience stores are open 24 hours a day, but not grocery stores. So, um, if they ever did that, then yeah, I'd probably start walking more often. And uh, let me all uh, look at something real quick. All right, I thought the uh, I thought it ended. But, but yeah. So if if pos if you can do it, if you can if you can do it easily and safely, then yeah, walk more. But again, again, the it, car dependent suburbia. Uh, most most of the roads that you have around here aren't really streets or roads. They're called strodes. Part street, part road. They're actually pretty dangerous. So yeah, you, if somebody just want, if somebody was like me and just want, would rather just drive that quarter mile. I totally understand. Um, fly less. Again, when pro when practical, yes. This, I knew this for years. Ever since I was a little, ever since I was a kid. I mean, I came from an unplanned pregnancy. Both of my sisters, both of my stepbrothers, also came from unplanned pregnancies. We were basically treated like somebody that was in the way. We were basically a major inconvenience to our parents, a total burden. So, I totally agree with this. I'm real big on Planned Parenthood, and I got the experience to back this up. Um. 
I think Henry Rollins has mentioned it. Bill Maher, I, he's mentioned it uh, several times in all of his new rules. Um, recycling is great, but you know what Mother Nature really loves? Condoms. You know, I mean, we're, I mean, humanity is, con is consuming resources far more than Mother Nature is off putting them out. So, it's one of the reasons why our agriculture existed. Because we just can't stop fucking. We just can't stop reproducing. So, I mean, if we... I'm kind of I'm kind of going out on a limb here. I'm kind of going off the top of my head. But maybe uh, if we weren't reproducing so damn much, agriculture never would have been invented. I mean, necessity is the... I mean, necessity is the mother of invention. You know, maybe if... Maybe if birth control existed way back in the day, you know, we wouldn't be having the problems that we're having now. So, um, yes, um, uh, Bill Maher would, would, uh, mention this several times, too. You know, the bottled water industry is a ripoff. I mean, I knew that immediately. I got a freaking, I mean... To this, you know, to this day here, all, all I have in my faucet is a water filter. That's it. But otherwise, I don't go, I, I think I might have a, I think I have a big 24 pack of bottled water here in my apartment someplace, but that's only for emergencies. Like if they have to shut down my water to work on it or they got a plumbing issue or something. But that's the only reason I have bottled water here in my apartment. Otherwise, I just hooked up a water filter to it and I drink from the tap. 90% um, of the time at work, when I drink water, I drink it out of the tap. I mean, unless, I mean, unless I'm at like, unless if I'm at my sister's place, yeah, I'll drink their bottled water because their tap water is god awful. Man, this stuff is nasty. But here in my apartment, tastes just fine. You know, doesn't taste horrible or anything. So. It's coming out of the tap. So again, again, unless the unless the water that comes out of your tap tastes really nasty, then drink out of the tap. You know why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? But yeah, I think um, I can't remember the name of the channel. Ordinary things. There were a Mitch. They had a one of their videos was like. Like the evil business of Nestle or something like that. Nestle, they uh, I guess they control the bottled water business. But yeah, they're practically pumping places across. They're practically pumping places dry because of the bottle, you know, for the bottled water business. So yeah, no. Again, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Unless that milk tastes like shit, then yeah, you kind of don't have any choice, but... This. Well, I was, well, was going to close out this video until I saw this last paragraph. I think she... Do I, am I chaining myself to a tree? No, that's not going to help. And I might end up highlighting this entire paragraph too. Because I'll bet this is probably one of the reasons why... why we're fatally complacent because you know way too many people out there tend to be fundamentalist about this they tend to be preachy they tend to you know they tend to stick their nose you know they tend to I want for lack of a better phrase they tend to stick their noses in where it doesn't belong or they tend to bring up their they tend to bring these issues up inappropriately all it does is just annoys the shit out of everybody it just makes it less likely that they're going to do it. It was also one of the reasons why I was so fat for so many years. Yeah, there was a time in my life where I weighed as much as 260. Like, I was I was freaking obese. One of the reasons why I was pretty much stayed that way is because most people that were really into health and fitness tended to be arrogant assholes. I mean, I don't want to give these pricks the satisfaction, so yeah, I'm going to keep eating the junk food. Part of it was addiction, but another part of it was because, you know, spite the same reason why bill hicks was smoking he hates uh 
if you can't stand the non-smokers because they tend to be a bunch of self-righteous pricks. So yeah, it, you know, we tend to get very resentful when people start preaching their lifestyle to us, especially when we didn't ask for it. And I'll bet that's one of the reasons why people are so complacent. Part of it's out of resentment. Oh, damn, there's still more to this. Oh, damn. Oh, wow, okay. I thought this was it. it this kind of this kind of resembled a this kind of resembled a closing statement here. Okay, um I don't have time to analyze this paragraph, but I kind of get the gist of it, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this whole thing. Waiting a week for something. Waiting a week for something to ship or taking five minutes to email, donating some of the precious money to an organization, etc., etc. Okay. 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 Yep. But otherwise, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it off here, uh, since I still have like, like two or three more videos that I need to make and upload. And it's oh damn, it's like 7:30 or 7:30 p.m. right now, and there's. I still got to do some more grocery shopping yet. Whoops. So, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of went over long on this. But, anyway, I'll just go ahead and cut it off here. So, <laughs> but if you guys made it this far, thanks for watching. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll see you all next time. <laughs> take, take care. So.